Final bosses in Sonic games have always been home to some of the best moments in the series, even in some of the more critically received titles. From fighting perfect chaos in Sonic Adventure to taking down Solaris in Sonic 06, you can always expect something amazing once you reach that final boss. Most of the time. Enter Sonic Frontiers. Experience Sonic like never before. Yep, I sure am. This is a pretty weird package. On one hand, you have a game with some of the best controls, story, and gameplay in the series, and on the other hand, you have some of the worst. It's like this big mishmash of all these different concepts and ideas that somehow works? Don't get me wrong, not every idea in this game lands, but a lot of the time they do. And one of those ideas that works are the Titan fights. These are some of the greatest fights to come out of Sonic, period. Every single one absolutely nails the spectacle of fighting a Super Sonic. And each Titan is so distinct from each other as well. With Gigando's design being extremely tall and threatening, Wyvern's design looking jagged but graceful, and Knight looking like an office chair. Not to mention the music in these fights goes so hard, it rivals some of the best tracks in the whole series. And we haven't even talked about the final boss yet. After defeating the fourth Titan, Supreme, which is arguably the worst Titan, Sonic and Sage take it to space to fight the true enemy. The end. Oh, this is gonna be amazing! It's everything I've ever wanted. Yes, this is the final boss. In a game where boss fights have insane set pieces like this, the final boss is simply a 2D shoot 'em up. It was just disappointing. Not to mention the ending itself was also underwhelming. Sage sacrifices herself, Sonic just doesn't care, and Eggman is left mourning Sage's death. And that was how it was for about two weeks. What's happening with Sonic Twitter this time? They're probably yapping about his muzzle curve again or something. Oh. Oh. This is the best thing since sliced bread! It was announced that we would be getting three whole DLC updates to Sonic Frontiers, with the final one promising more playable characters, as well as a revised ending. This was huge news! One of Frontiers' main criticisms was the ending, so the fact that Sonic Team was actually listening to feedback was really assuring. And then, on September 28th, 2023, the Final Horizon update was released. It was pretty good! The other characters played great, for the most part. The new cyberspace stages were awesome, and the towers were really fun to climb. It was just all around a sick addition to the game. Time to talk about that new ending, though. After climbing the fifth tower, Sonic has to complete the Master King Coco trial to fully control his cyber corruption. And what was that trial exactly? HELL ON EARTH! Why is the parry less than a frame? Why do I have to fight all three in a row? And why does the stupid wyvern chase do it every time I die? Don't even get me started on extreme mode! After eventually completing the trial, it's time for the final boss. Oh. Oh, it's just Supreme again. Man, I, I wish there was something a bit cooler to end off the update with, but what what the heck is going on? After defeating Supreme, the end takes control of its corpse and transforms into an eldritch monster in a sequence that gives off heavy Dark Gaia vibes. It's time for the final showdown. First off, I've got to mention the setting. While it's still a Ronos Island, it's all bathed in this dark red glow that gives it a very climactic feel, and with the end looming just above the earth, creates a sense of scale that isn't really seen in most Sonic games. Now for the fight itself. When you start attacking, you'll notice that you're barely dealing chip damage to it. And at the same time, the end is shooting at projectiles that lower your max ring count every time you get hit. It looks dire, but... But after a bit, Sonic taps into his cyber corruption and transforms into a new form. Super Sonic 2. Yeah, I know it looks kinda lame, but shut up, it's cool. Just, just shut up, shut up! What does this new form give Sonic? The bane of my existence! To be fair, the perfect parry works a lot better in this boss fight, as the end's attacks are much easier to time than the other titans but it still takes some getting used to. When you manage to parry a sequence of attacks, you'll see the sick animation of Sonic slapping them away. It's a nice way to reward the player for mastering the perfect parry. Even though you can deal more damage to the end now, as long as that cord is connected, it can still heal back up to full health. So you may be wondering, how do I remove that cord? Well, it's simple. Attack the head, and then dodge. This will lock onto the cord, allowing you to break it off of Supreme. This right here is the worst part of the fight. Now, if you play on easy mode, the game will give you a prompt to dodge but on any other difficulty, it's all trial and error. 
unless you 100% the DLC, and then this Dumble will tell you exactly what to do. Why is it locking in a central tip behind 100% completion? I don't know. You tell me, Sega! Aside from that, once you finally get the cord off and chip away at the health bar, Supreme will just kind of flop on the ground. From here, you have to perform a quick side loop on the gun holster, which launches it out Jetstream Sam style and sticks it straight into the ground. Then, side loop the gun once more to begin phase two. This is where the fight really begins. When you get close, Supreme will start flailing the arms on its back around. This means it's charging up to attack the Cyber Shield. If you do the same punch to dodge combo you used to sever the cord, you'll be flung onto Supreme's back, where you can parry to cancel his charge and retaliate with a grand slam. Massive shout out to the animators here, like, that animation is so clean! Now, if you don't cancel Supreme's charge in time, you'll give him an opening to attack the Cyber Shield, and if that happens enough, it's game over. Supreme will then shoot out more energy blasts, but if you fail to parry these, a cutscene will play that drains your ring count all the way down to 100. It's now or never. After you parry enough projectiles, Supreme will throw out some melee attacks. Getting hit by one of these puts you in a QTE segment, but if you manage to parry all three, you'll be rewarded with a Grand Slam. So far, every boss in this game has had a unique animation for being siloed. Giganto is flung into the air, Wyvern is chained up with energy binds, and Knight is stabbed with multiple light blades. But if you manage to Silo Supreme, it'll be carried in the air like Giganto, but something's different. Siloping again won't slam him down, instead, it will just raise him higher. And if you're able to parry one more attack, you'll be witness to one of the sickest animations in a Sonic game. And if snapping to slam Supreme down isn't enough, if you do the double side loop, you'll break his neck as well. Can't say I was expecting a Sonic game to be this graphic, but hey, I'm all for it. Once you finish off the health bar, it's time for the final QTE segment. After sending Supreme flying towards the moon with a meaty uppercut, it's time for my favorite ending in all of Sonic. Sonic, it's now or never! Sorry, Master King. Looks like I'm going all out after all. This cutscene will always be special to me, whether it be Sonic's new transformation, Kellen's chorus mixed with that close-up of Eggman, or those screams from Roger. I'll always love this moment. Then cuts to Super Sonic, floating down to Earth, as it plays the same thing played during Sage's death in the original ending. 
as Sonic crash lands back on Earth and celebrates with his friends, the camera pans to Eggman. Last time, it was the sign of a broken man, someone who had just lost their daughter. But now, things are different. Eggman and Sage are now together, staring across the horizon, as Eggman tells her they can finally go home. And if that wasn't enough, the credits music is a vocal remix of the original final boss theme, I'm With You. And that's Sonic Frontiers. This ending almost broke me. The only other games that have made me feel the same way are the Ori games, and for good reason. It's just amazing. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. Sorry it took a while to get this one out, but I had a fun time making it regardless. So, if you're new here, consider liking, subscribing, and be sure to comment down below your favorite final boss in the Sonic series. As always, I'm Lag, and thank you for watching. See ya. Feelings deep inside Come flowing from my eyes I get to go home with you All the light